Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's learn how to set up transitions in Keynote. One of the trickiest parts to learning Keynote is learning how to set up transitions into slides and for items on slides. Let's take a look at both. So here I've got a sample preview document with four slides. Now I want to put a transition between slide one and slide two. So the first thing you want to do is bring up the inspector by pressing the inspector button in the top toolbar. This brings up the inspector here which has several different modes. I want to choose the second one which is the slide mode. And this is what allows me to add a transition here. So I select the slide first one. I want the transition to go between one and two so I want to select slide one. And then I want to select the effect. So I'm going to scroll through the different options here and select cube as an effect and it demonstrates the transition right here so I can preview it. I can set a duration, I can set various different things about the transition like I want this to be right to left and I can select that it's going to start uh, on click or automatically after a certain delay. So if I set it for a five second delay it will play the first slide for five seconds and automatically transition to the second one. I'm going to do the standard on click. Now I can see in the left sidebar I have a little thing in the corner here that tells me that a transition has been set. I can preview this by playing the presentation and there's the first slide. When I click on it to go to the second slide I can see my transition plays out. Now you want to pay attention to the different properties that each transition has. So for instance cube has just direction but if I change to say mosaic uh, I not only have direction but I have the type of mosaic so I can do flip, scale, spin and I can choose the size of the blocks as well. So you get more than just the dozen or so different transitions. You actually get hundreds of different ones if you include all the variations that you can add. Now suppose I have a slide like this where I have a bullet list of different items and in addition to a transition perhaps coming into or out of the slide I also want to uh, determine how these different bullet items appear. You can do that by going to the next part of the inspector which is the build inspector. And with the build inspector selected I can select a specific item like this list of bullet items here and I can select how it builds in and builds out. So for instance for these bullet items I could have it build in by using say the blast effect and you can see it previewed here. If I run this I can see that the slide appears with out the list and I click and it blasts those items in. But better than that I can also select the delivery from all at once I can say by bullet. And I can select from first to last the duration for each one and now I can preview it and see what happens and with each click one item appears. Now you can also use build transitions on various items on a slide. So for instance I've got a slide here that has four different items, three pieces of text and a picture here. And I can select a build in animation for each one of these. So let's say I have each one come in with a comet transition and I can select it here and perhaps this one comes in with a blast and this one comes in with a flip. Now I can change the order at which the, these appear. You can see the order number appears here in the inspector as well. So I have one, two, three, and four. I can change this to say to have the picture appear third. That automatically puts the one that was previously third in the fourth. So now I have order of one, two, three, and four. When I play this, I'll get exactly that. You can see there's that first transition for the first item, second item, now a flip there, and then the last one. Now another thing you could do is add an additional action to a build. So you've got the build in and build out but you also can select action. So I've selected this text here. I'm going to select action and one of the few effects I can add say is to scale it. So I can have it scale up slightly like that and it will happen when I click. So if I play this slide right now and I click you can see it scales that text up. So take a look at how I've used that here. I've got these four items here and in addition to uh, removing the build ins from them from before I've added these scale effects. So the first thing that's going to happen with this one is it's going to scale up. Then I'm going to have it scale down again. I've done that by clicking the add action button. Matter of fact I can 
click on more options here and it will show me the build order right here of everything that I've added uh, and I see I've got a scale for title one and then a scale again and I can select any one of these and see what it is. So the first one is scale to 200 then scale back to 100 then this one to 200 and back to 100 etc. So if I run this I've built it so that it will highlight this item, shrink it back, highlight this item, shrink it back, etc. So you can combine build ins, build outs and actions to do different things with different items and basically continue to add all of these different things and build very complex animations that happen on a single slide either automatically or with clicks. You can even add move actions to the individual objects to have them move around on the screen. So you can kind of use Keynote as an animation tool to animate objects around on a slide. Hope this gives you some really good ideas for your next presentation. Till next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.